What is dating like for a foreigner here in Mexico? We're gonna be answering one of my most requested questions today. So if you wanna know the answer, please stay tuned for more. Hey Lambo, what's up bro? Good morning, man. What are you, what are you doing, man? What are you, bro, it's not even seven in the morning and you're already, not only are you, you're on Grindr, you're on OkCupid, and on Tinder? What the heck, bro? You have to relax a little bit, brother. It's not like you're having bad luck out here. Shit, man. Hey, guys. Hmm. How's it going? And welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be today we're going to be talking about dating out here in Mexico, specifically in Medina, Mexico. But I think this pertains to most of Mexico, and uh, we're, we're just going to keep, keep talking about it. I'm going to tell you my story, my experience, and um, experience of others, and we'll go from there. Now, one of the main questions I get asked all the time, because I get all kinds of questions um, asked about Mexico and so on and so forth, but one of the main questions I, I've always been getting asked since I've been out here has been, how is the dating scene out here? Now, I get asked this by women and by men. I can't really answer the men part, you know, maybe this guy can, but I can't really answer like the, you know, how it is dating men out here. But if it's anything like dating the women out here, it's pretty, pretty fucking great. All right. And I'm going to give you guys, you know, my reasons as to why I think it's great. Now, I come from the U.S. of A. Even though I'm Cuban and I was born in Miami. Again, anyone that knows Miami is kind of like separate from the rest of the country. So I grew up Latin, Latin, you know, Cuban, Hispanic. I grew up in a very Hispanic environment and a very Hispanic uh you know, Latin culture. So by the time I moved out here to Medina, Mexico, for me, it was just like a, uh, what is it, a duck to water. I, I mean, I was already swimming around here, no problem, because, you know, it was pretty similar to a lot of the things that I was used to just growing up in Miami with my whole Latin Hispanic culture. Now, for the longest time, um, for like, I wanna say now five, six years, I had already left Miami Hold on one second. Let me close this uh, window over here. A lot of noise. Dating out here is phenomenal. You want to know why it's phenomenal? Because dating out here is like dating used to be. What dating has always been. Okay? Um, sure, there's new additions out here like Tinder and all these other apps, you know, in order to enhance or better the dating uh, scene out here or the ability to date. But for the most part, you know, out here still exists the traditional thing where if a girl's walking by and a girl likes her, you know, the guy will make any attempt to at least talk to her, say something to her. The girl will be like, oh my God, oh. especially if she thinks he's cute, whatever. And that's it. For reals. I've told you guys many, many times um, in the past, now, remember, a little caveat, I've been dating my girlfriend, Christian, which you guys already know, you guys have seen many times in my videos, for, this is month number seven, I know, it, time just flies, but for you guys that have known me for a lot longer than that, you guys know that I was already so done with dating coming from the US and dealing with the experiences of the US, I was just so done with women, done with dating, done with the whole thing, that I was like, well, I'm never gonna have that again. I don't, I don't want a relationship, I don't wanna be with anyone, I don't wanna go through that again. And so when I came up to Mexico, you know, I just downloaded Tinder. I really didn't do anything. I just downloaded Tinder and within a few days I was already. I already had a, a lot of dates before I even got to the place I'm living in right now. You know what I'm saying? I, I was able to get a date quicker than I got weed, okay? I was able to get dates quicker than a lot of the other resources that took me a while to get out here. So, needless to say, it's been pretty easy. And I've actually had friends out here, other foreigners coming from Europe and other parts that they used to, that they, they come out here and they tell me, oh, how come I don't have the luck that you're having? How come whatever? And that would just like, you know, fix a couple things on their Tinder thing, give them a couple little tips, you know, regular dating tips. And before you knew it, they had a Tinder just like me, you know? And again, if you guys remember my older videos, I would show you guys my Tinder and it was just like, 
you know, 50 matches. I'm talking to 20 of them. All of them, eight, to eight and above. All right? And so, all I'm saying is, I know this video is a little bit all over the place, but the reality is that I'm just trying to make a point here, trying to tell a story, trying to inform you guys. The short answer is that dating out here is phenomenal. I think the same goes for women and for men. One of the things that helped me when I was living in Seattle was the fact that I was a foreigner in my own country. Because remember, I come from Miami, I'm Cuban, I was like all these things, and I went to Seattle, the complete opposite, the you know, literally, of you know the other end of the spectrum of uh, America and um, I was you know enjoying the the things of being a foreigner now when I moved down to LA and I lived in LA I want to say almost two years I got zero zero dates zero that many dates okay that many I had tons of friends tons of girls that were my friends but zero dates okay and no I wasn't that guy that was paying for things that was doing that no 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 I was just an artist, we now have all these artist friends out there and that whole thing, but the whole dating scene was whack as fuck too. So not only could I not, I not get a date, but almost everybody was in the same boat. And everyone was unhappy and you know, the myth is true. LA is one of the worst dating cities in the world, literally. Sure, it has some of the most beautiful people in the world, but not a dating city. So again, when I came out to Mexico, um, even though my Tinder was blowing up and I was seeing a lot of women, for the most part, I was just repeating the same, same, um, same things I was going through in Seattle, only with a lot less work and effort, for reals. The girls were just, they liked me because I was Cuban. I was cute. I had charisma. I had a personality. And for me, for the first time, fuck, I want to say ever, I mean, not, not ever, but for the first time in like, 15 years, you know, women were actually complimenting me on these things, actually wanted to be around me because of just the basic things of like, oh, hey, you're a nice guy. Oh, hey, you're a smart guy. Hey, I enjoy the conversation. Hey, you know, all that stuff. And sure, you know, dating, like, I didn't have a problem dating out here. I've never, you know, I, I had women, I was dating all the time, you know, for, for the most part. Um, and all my dates were cheap, you know, all my dates have always been cheap. You know, here you can just go to the park, or go get some ice cream, or get some coffee, or whatever. And it, it's literally just like it used to be. I mean, really, like it's like if you get along, great. If you don't, you don't. There's more fish in the sea. And women out here aren't like we're used to back on the on the west coast, on the east coast. Ah, fuck. Women out here aren't like they are in the U.S. of A. And again, you know, there's plenty of amazing women out there. All right, but. I mean, I'm talking to really anyone that's in my age group or younger that's having problems right now with, with this whole situation. You know, I'm definitely not talking to like uh, the 60 year olds out there, the 50 something year olds out there with, you know, married, already married with kids or very financially stable. You know, you guys ain't having no problem, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, right now, even if you're a woman in the USA or in, uh, in Europe or anything like that, you're also having trouble finding a good man a worthy man and so on and so forth you might be a very good woman but you can't find a good man you might be a really good man and you can't find a good woman and there's plenty of horrible men and horrible women out there in the dating scene right now and that's another topic for another day but again guys when you come out here all of a sudden that you know if you want um you know all of a sudden you come out here and you start realizing that things are extremely different out here things are the way that we've always wanted them to be Literally, you know, everyone out here, look, even my girlfriend, she would be considered feminist, far left. She's an artist. I mean, I could go on and on. In the U.S. of A, you know, we're, we're just dating. Out here, we're borderline, you know, about to get married, have kids, the whole fucking deal. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, these are the things that I just want to, you know, just put out there. Now, imagine just like a more typical, traditional Mexican woman or man that definitely want to has want to have kids, a family, the whole structure, and so on and so forth. And if you know anything about Latin culture, Mexican culture, you already know it's fun times. That's I mean, what more do you want than having a big family, having these family gatherings, party all the fucking time? I mean, come on, come on. I mean, uh, right now it's just me and grandma and. Uh, 
what, what is it, and Christian, and the doggy, and her friends, and it's already a fucking blast every time we get together. I can't even, I can't wait to, it keeps growing and growing and growing. And again, remember, I come from a Hispanic family, anyways. But the point I'm making is that a lot of expats are constantly asking me about the dating life out here because, again, we all have different reasons as to why we want to move to Mexico or specifically Merida, Mexico. Mexico. You know, some of it is for financial reasons, some of it is, you know, for, for freedom and liberty, and some of you guys is for, the, for dating. Some of you guys are fucking lonely as hell. I've been there, we've all been there, you know, and the dating scene is beyond horrendous. It's only getting worse in the USA or Canada or Europe or wherever the fuck you are. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, some people just want to move not just here, but to other parts of the world because they don't want to be lonely anymore. And in fact, some people out there, you know, guys specifically, they have these, uh, the whole mail order bride thing and that's not a good thing, you know, that's not a good path to be going down. But if all of a sudden you come out here and you could be a fucking fat, disgusting slob, but you know, you got a smile, you got a good personality, you're a good guy. Listen, bro, there's a, there's a chick out there that likes fat guys and he likes to laugh. You'll be good. You get what I'm saying? You could be skinny, nerdy as fuck, barely speaking Spanish, but you have a big schlong, and again, you know, you, you have at least the ability to hold a conversation, you'll probably be having a girlfriend, or at least some fun, and things like that. And the same thing with women, you know what I mean? Like, for women, it's actually a little easier, you know what I mean? I, I mean, for reals. Um, but you guys have your own set of uh, situations out here. I'm just talking from the man's perspective because that's all I know how to talk about. And in reality, by the way, you know, a little caveat, I wanted to make this video a long time ago, literally, but I just haven't because, well, I've been happily with my girlfriend for a long time and I really just haven't had the need to make this. Now, I'm, I'm only happier now than I ever was with my girlfriend. I'm happier with her every single day. Like I said, you know, look how far we've come. I, I, as I just mentioned, you know, how far we're, we're planning on going as well. Um, but I, to me, it's like I need to make this video because it's like something that needs to be answered, you know, and like, uh, and a lot of people, you know, like, I know I'm going on like in a lot of circles, you know, trying to answer this, but, you know, the reality is, is that what you guys are basically looking for is the population out here in Mexico, are they as crazy or as they as far left crazy as the US and Europe, Canada and other places like that? And the answer is basically no. Now, you'll find yourselves, I've seen, I've dated girls out here that are ultra feminist, you know, just like in the US and so on and so forth. And they definitely exist in places like Mexico City and other, you know, bigger cities. Remember, Mexico City is the size of Los Angeles and stuff. So, um, so you're definitely gonna find them out there. But for the most part, even the most feminist girl that I've dated, and I'm, I'm not just including my girlfriend, but others out there that were way, way more they still want the whole traditional thing. She might not have want a family, but she might want a family, you know, like dogs instead of kids, you know? She might be extremely, you know, hardcore, you know, the man is just my sex toy, but she's still very effeminate. She's not acting like a man. And just, you know, I could go on and on and on and on. And again, there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff, you know, to each their own. You know, there's plenty of people that are happy with this environment, and that's why, you know, they choose to live where they live. I was one of the people that was not happy with that in my environment and uh, sure it wasn't one of the reasons why I moved to Mexico but after I lived out here, after I'm living out here and moving out here, it's one of the reasons why I love Mexico and I'm so happy to be in Mexico because now I have my girlfriend. I have literally the love of my life. I mean, for real, I don't want to get all fucking lovey-dovey and all this stupid shit out here now, but the reality is is that I never would have found her if I never would have moved out here, and she is literally everything I've always wanted, and then some. And I am everything she's always wanted, and then some. And really, just think about that, you know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it seems like it's like a needle in a haystack to find this, these things, but the reality is is that we're just not looking in the right place. And that's what was happening to me. And that's what I think happens to a lot of you guys out there that, you know, you're in the US or Canada or whatever, and you're still looking through the same pile of crap, trying to find some gold, okay? Instead of just moving or, you know, putting yourself in another environment in which all you have is gold and you're just digging through gold. Because as you guys already know out there, especially if you're guys and, you know, I don't want to get too deep into this, but 
you know, he can move to other Pacific islands out in the, uh, you know, um, you know, Asian Pacific islands out there in the, you know what I mean, Philippines, Thailand, whatever. And you can find yourselves, again, 10 million times more girls, okay, that are going to fit that traditional mold than you are here in Mexico. Okay, and they're all over the place, you know, depending on where you go, you know, in Latin, you know, so, so, you know, the thing is, is again, it's, it's what you want and what you're looking for. I, I didn't come out here looking for that, but once I came out here and I saw that what I was looking for was here, I was like, oh, wow. And then, you know, how I came about meeting with my girlfriend, it was pretty much a chance meeting. So that's, you know, again, another layer to, to all this stuff is that, you know, we pretty much just met kind of randomly and, you know, long story short, we're still together, you know, literally love at first sight type of thing. I mean, for reals, you know, it's incredible. And I'm very lucky to have her. I'm very lucky, you know, that, that we met and that we have the relationship that we have. But again, it's only because I was looking for a specific thing. I couldn't find it where I was living or anywhere else. I gave up on looking for it. And the minute you give up on it, that's the minute that it lands on your lap. The minute you start looking for something, you know, the minute that you stop, you know, so you know how that works and that's it. And so, I think out there for a lot of people that are in first world countries with first world problems, you know, in this sense, you know, finding a mate, your best bet would be to, you know, move to a country in which, you know, um, the, your opposite sex partner um, would, or same sex partner, but the partner you're looking for would be holding a lot of the same values that you hold. It just so happens that a lot of the same values that I hold near and dear to my heart and my soul is you know typical typical to a latin person or a mexican person so you know out here no matter what for the most part you know they all share a lot of the um traditions and a lot of the wants and desires that i want now you know i meet this girl you know christian which you know now goes above and beyond you know all the things that i've always wanted and bam you know long story short yeah you know we're together for forever you know type of shit. and that's it guys so if you guys are literally struggling out there and this is a major, major concern, problem in your life and you are looking to move abroad basically for this, then yeah, man, I, I would encourage you guys to do it because um, the reality is, is that maybe for you, you might not want a Mexican girlfriend or a Latin girlfriend. You might want a Russian girlfriend. You might want a Filipino girlfriend. And again, same thing for, for women. You know, maybe a Mexican man isn't the right man for you. You might want a Muslim. You might want to, um, again, you know, like a, an, an Asian Hong Konger, a Japanese guy, uh, whatever. You know, but the point is, is that if you are not finding what you want where you are, then you got to look elsewhere and you'll find it. Trust me. All right. So that goes with everything I talk about on this channel. All right. And that's why I really wanted to talk about this, too, because I know that I was going all over the place and shit like that. But the reality is, is that. Um, dating out here in Mexico is beyond amazing. It really is awesome because it's just like dating is supposed to be, like dating is in a good majority of the world still. It's just regular dating. You know, men um, trying to um, court the woman, okay? And traditional gender roles and all that stuff that comes with it. And, um, you know, to me, I love it. I'm happy as hell. And that's it. So. Guys, I really hope that today's video was informative. Um, I know it was more of a story time than anything else. But again, guys, you know, for women and guys, all you got to do is as soon as you land, download Tinder, fill out your profile, and you're good to go. All right? That's it. It's not that hard. Guys, I want to give a shout out to all my patrons out there. I want to give a shout out to every single one of you guys that contribute to the show. Whether you guys are contribute with information, with um, with topics of discussion, whether you're contributing with a few bucks here or there, where you're you know um, where you're helping with um, you know just sending some some crypto. Um, it doesn't matter how you guys help. You know, you guys are, are, are all instrumental. We're all one big happy family, one big uh, you know happy community here, trying to help all of us each other. You know, help all of us uh help each other all out at the same time that's what i meant to say because again this community is filled with all kinds of people you know we talk about mexico stuff we have knowledge on moving abroad living abroad we have a lot of other people that live abroad all over the place we have uh, a lot of bitcoin experts here not experts a lot of people there's no experts all right i don't like that word expert but there's a lot of people that talk about crypto and stuff like that and there's so many other topics and we're all together just building this happy family to learn 
okay how to get out of the system that we're in right now okay because all of us most of us okay that are watching this video are in a system which has failed them and is obviously going to continue failing them and everyone for the most part is looking for a way out and there's so many things to cover because you need to have financial freedom you got to have a mate right for some people out there you you know you gotta ha you, you gotta know how to do all these things you gotta do a, know a lot of you gotta know a lot of things all right to really um help you um take that extra step and again that's what we're just trying to do here so all right time to wrap this up all right so guys thank you so much for watching i love you guys thank you for visiting jose artega <laughs> I can't even say my name. Thank you for visiting joseadiaga.com. All right. Checking out, you know, the website. Thank you for checking out the, the merchandise store for purchasing t-shirts and purchasing stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for supporting and contributing in every way possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, you already know what to do. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. And last but not least, please stay awesome. And um, you already know the deal. The, the, you already know the deal. I'll see you guys manana. Peace and uh, laters. All right. Don't forget daily uploads. Daily uploads. Daily uploads. Bro, this guy sure talks a lot of crap.